How's it going guys? My name is Dom and today I'm going to be showing you how you can use JavaScript to programmatically animate your HTML elements. All right. So this right here is actually really easy to do and it uses a relatively new method called element.animate. Okay. Now this right here is going to uh, work uh, very similar to the standard CSS animate property. So if you know how to use the CSS animate property, this video is going to be a lot easier to understand. If not, still feel free to follow along. But basically, at the moment on this index.html page, I've got this green square and I'm using CSS to achieve this animation where, of course, uh, the square moves to the right side and loses some opacity. So I'm going to be showing you how to produce an equivalent animation programmatically using JavaScript code. All right. So going inside VS Code here, I've got this HTML page like I just showed you. I've got a div with an ID of square for that green square, of course. And I've got a linked up JavaScript file and CSS file. Going inside the CSS file, it currently looks like this. I've got a few properties on the square to make it look a little bit nicer for the video. But more importantly, at the bottom here, I've got a couple of properties related to the animation. So I've got an animation called square down. Maybe it should be called square right instead. I'll just rename that. Now this animation is going to take the square from uh, a translate X of zero and an opacity of one to the right side with a translate X of 100 pixels and of course a lower opacity of 0.25. So I'm sure again, if you've used CSS animation before, this right here is going to make sense uh, most likely. I've also got a 2000 or two second uh, duration on the animation and a fill mode of forwards. That way, once we reach this last state, it is going to remain like that. If you don't have this forwards, it's going to revert back to the original um, state. So let's reproduce this animation using JavaScript. Going inside my JavaScript file, I've got a constant called square and it's simply a reference to that div which I showed you earlier on. So how do we now animate the square? What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull up the CSS file to the left side and just comment out this keyframes. So we only have a single animation running at once uh, using JavaScript, of course, as opposed to the CSS version. And it's also good to reference both the CSS file and the JavaScript file so we can uh, copy it across one for one. So the way it works is you simply call the animate method on your uh, HTML element. So I can say here square dot and then say animate just like this. Then it's going to take in two arguments and both of them are going to be objects. Now there are a couple of slight variations uh, as to how you can call this method, but I think the most common and most uh, useful way is to provide two objects. So uh, the first, uh, oh, actually my mistake, I meant to say an, uh, an array and an object. So I apologize, an array as the first argument and then an object as the second argument, okay? In this first argument here, the array is essentially your list of different uh, states. Okay, so in this case here, I've got a from and a to, which means if I want to create an equivalent animation in the JavaScript, I must have two um, items inside this array. So we'll hop down here. I'll come back to that shortly. The second object that you provide to the animate method is going to take in a couple of extra options and properties which are going to uh, map almost directly to all of these other animation CSS properties. For example, you can specify the duration, the fill mode inside this second object. Okay, I'm now going to stop talking and just get an example working and we'll come back to um, the usage of this method. So let's provide the first uh, set of properties for this from section. So using an object here, I'm going to say transform. Okay. And I'm going to say translate X zero, just like this. Okay. And this, again, this is just like the CSS animate method. So now I can also say 
an opacity of one. Okay, let's have a second object now. I'm gonna copy the same properties here and change the values to of course be 100 pixels and an opacity of 0.25. So we can see here how it looks very similar to the CSS version. You specify a list, an array of two objects here, one for every single item you have inside your keyframes definition, right? Now, inside the object here, let's provide a duration. We'll say duration equal to 2004, 2000 milliseconds. Save this, go inside the browser, I'll refresh the page and we can see here that in fact, it definitely does work. So we have the animation working and this is all done using JavaScript alone. There is no CSS involved, of course, to make this work. Um, maybe it's worth actually removing these properties as well, just to further demonstrate the point that there is definitely no CSS involved here. Back in the browser, refresh, and again, it works just like you would expect it to. Now, of course, we forgot to include the uh, fill mode. So I'll say here, fill, then say forwards to, uh, to get the equivalent um, you know, specification for the CSS version. Save this back in the browser. And we can see now it's gonna remain in the last uh, set of properties right down here. Now, I can get back to talking about the different options that you can provide here. So focusing on the second object that is provided to the animate uh, method, I apologize, it is a little bit hard to sort of see that this right here is a second argument to the function, but maybe if I uh, just pop down the array and then uh, just make it a bit smaller, it might be easier to sort of read this. Let's try this instead, then uh, minimize the array. So with this second object here, if you press uh, control and space, or I think it might be command and space on a Mac, um, you get VS Code auto completion for all the different properties you can provide here for those options. For example, let's say delay equal to 1000. It'll now take one second for the animation to begin in the browser. Save this back in here. Wait a second, bang, then it starts going again. You've also got things like your, um, your, your timing function. So if I just say here easing, I can set it to, uh, to be something such as ease in or ease dash in dash out. Okay, save this back in the browser. And of course, that right there is equivalent to your CSS property for the uh, timing function. Now, I also encourage you guys to read the documentation for the animate method. There are many more things that I can't possibly cover in a short video like this. So I recommend that you read through this and it's actually a really good learning tool as well. But one thing I do want to mention um, to finish off this video here is going to be the offsets that you can provide because many times you may want to do something such as having a 0% then a 100% and then maybe even like a 50% a, a inside here or 25%. So to achieve that using CSS, you need to use something called an offset property. So these belong inside your list of uh, properties here. So we've got, of course, a specification for all the CSS properties that will change, but you can also say control space offset. Okay, so offset here, I can now provide some more information particularly the percentage. So let's actually make a, uh, a second, or let's make a third object here, but of course in the second position in the list here. And we're gonna say a transform of, uh, let's do 200 pixels and an opacity, let's keep the opacity at one, okay? But I'm gonna say an offset here of 0 0.25. Uh, so this means that essentially, it's the equivalent of saying 25% and then putting all of, you know, all of these properties inside here. So now if I was to save this, go back in the browser here, we can see that we start at zero, there we go, 25 and then back to 100%, okay? I probably shouldn't have used the same value as the opacity, it makes it look a little bit, or well, it's harder to see that this is actually an offset, I apologize, but yeah, you can see here, that's the offset of 0.25 for 25%, and the opacity is of course 0.25, completely separate. 
It's also worth mentioning that the offset is going to range from 0 to 1. And of course, that right there converts directly to um, your percentages to 100%, right? Okay. So that is all for this video. I hope you guys uh, learned something. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll be leaving the link to the documentation for this uh, relatively new JavaScript method in the description down below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.